Does the flesh dominate your life? That's what I'm talking about. There's a big difference. Sowing to the flesh, sowing to the spirit, secondly. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. To sow to the Spirit is to walk by the Spirit, as Paul says in Galatians. To be led by the Spirit of God. Sowing to the Spirit results in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience. All the fruit of the Spirit being evident in our lives. Paul said in Romans 8, But as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Ephesians 1, Paul says the Holy Spirit is the evidence, the seal on our life of God's inheritance that He's given us. We've said many times, that one's mine, that one's mine, that one's mine. God said, I'm going to seal my promise to you through the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. So to walk in the Spirit is to be led by the Spirit, to be filled with the Spirit. And we've said many times, remember, we don't get more of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gets more of us. It's a surrender a surrender of our life to the Spirit of God. That's how we walk in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit. Again, the seeds we sow are in our thought life and in our actions. Those who sow to the Spirit set their minds on the things above where Christ is. Again, our mind is the battleground here. The mind set on the flesh is death. The mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. Paul said in Philippians 3, many, For many walk, of whom I've often told you, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Now, why would Paul tell the church at Philippi about enemies? They're all out there. They're everywhere. But Paul said, These are in the church. These are in the church. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their appetite. Whose glory is in their shame. Who set their minds on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven. It's a spiritual mindset. We sow to the Spirit. We sow to the Spirit by spending time in the Word, spending time in prayer, spending time encouraging one another in the Lord. We take time each day to invest wisely. I've told you several times, only two things last forever. And these are the things we need to be investing our life in. What are they? That's right. The Word of God and the souls of men. That's it. Everything else is going to burn. God's Word will last forever. It abides forever. The souls of men, it's appointed to all men once to die, and after that, the judgment. Now, some are going to burn in hell, but it's going to be an eternal fire, an eternal burning. But those who sow to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Eternal life. When we sow in this field, the field of the Spirit, we sow to the Spirit, and Paul says we reap eternal life. What is eternal life? It's knowing God, John 17, 3. And so we got, knowing God is eternal life, and we cultivate that relationship now by sowing to the Spirit as we are sowing the ministry of godly character in our lives. And here's the promise. You cannot avoid this. You cannot change this. It's irrevocable, immutable. Whatever a man sows, this will he also reap. Whatever a man sows, this will he also reap. Can't change that, folks. There are no provisions. Thirdly, quickly, we have not only the ministry of God's Word and the ministry of godly character, but the ministry of good works. Paul says in verse 10, So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of the faith. You know, as you, kind of, as you connect verse 10 to verse 9 and verse 8 and sow into the Spirit, then that's a part of sow into the Spirit as well, is, is our ministry to one another. But while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Now remember, Paul is writing this letter to correct false teaching. The Judaizers were saying that faith in Christ is not enough. And you know, most of us, we want to go preach the book of Galatians because we want people to know that we're saved by grace. 
Grace alone. It's, there's no other gospel. Paul says there's only one gospel, the gospel of faith in Christ. Paul says you began that ministry by faith. You began, you received the Spirit by faith. Now are you trying to finish in the flesh? And so he is just ranting and railing against the works of the flesh. That's the whole purpose of the, the letter of Galatians. Now he comes to the letter, to the end of the letter. And what does he tell us to do? Do good. Do good. Is that all we are, is a bunch of do-gooders? Don't you hear that all the time? It's usually in a negative sense, a bunch of do-gooders. People who think they're better than someone else. But Paul says, no, don't lose sight. The law is now the law of Christ. And the law of Christ, Paul says, is to through love serve one another. Through love serve one another. So Paul says we're to be careful to do good, first of all, to all people. This would be A, our ministry to the world. Our ministry to the world. We must be careful not to lose sight of the fact that Christ sent his disciples. He has sent us into all the world to make disciples. So we have a responsibility. It's not just us four and no more kind of deal. Paul says do good to all people. So again, just quickly, how are we impacting the world? You know, every month we give to the International Mission Board. We're helping support missionaries all over the world. But first of all, let me back up. What's the, the best thing we can do to be in terms of doing good? That's to tell people about Jesus. I'll ask and answer. We're running out of time. The best thing we can do is tell people about Jesus. So if we're going to do good to the world, to everybody, then we need to be supporting missions like we are. But you know what? We can do better. We can do better. It's so exciting. If you look at our prayer list the last few weeks, we've got a list of people from Open Door Baptist Church who are going to Brazil, going to Cuba, going places around the world to share the gospel, to make a difference, to do good to all people. We can't lose sight of that. What are we doing to make this world a better place to live? We can give our money. We can go. Don't lose heart. Don't grow weary. Many of you have adopted children through Compassion International. You're making a difference in one child's life or some two or three even families. Don't, don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. Keep in touch with those children. Send them that $25 for their birthday. Send them that $25 at Christmas. That little extra. Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. We're trying to impact the world for Christ. Don't grow weary in doing good. Look around your neighborhood. Our association has started neighborhood ministries. What can I do to minister to my neighbors? Do good. Do good to all people. Let your light, Jesus said, shine before men so they may see your good works and pat you on the back. <laughs> no. See your good works and glorify your Father who's in heaven. Our ministry to the world. Secondly, our ministry to the church. Paul says here, look at verse 10. Let us do good to all people, especially to those who are the household of the faith. Folks, we are the church. We are the household of the faith. Now you say, well, I attend church. Yes, you come to church, I visit church, that's fine. But if you're a Christian, you're a part of the church. And this is the body of Christ. This is the church who meets in this building. And to be a part of the church, to be a member of the church, you have to be born again. Now you can come as much as you want. We want you here. But we want you a part of the true church, which is the body of Christ, which are all believers. And so in essence, what I'm saying is we need to be supporting one another, serving one another. Paul said through love, serve one another. How can we serve one another? Again, that's kind of an opening, you know, just loving each other, being there for one another, praying for one another, encouraging one another. But I want to close real quick with this. Why we have opportunity. Why we have opportunity. I've shared this before, but it's one of my favorite illustrations. The Greeks had a statue. It was a statue of an athletic man with wings on his feet, a razor in his hand, a long lock of hair in the front and bald in the back. And the inscription on the statue said, What is your name? 
He said, my name is opportunity. Who made you? Lysippus made me. Why do you have wings on your feet? Because I come swiftly. Why do you have a forelock on your forehead? So that when I come, men may grab me. Why are you bald in the back? Because once I am gone, no one can recapture me. Why do you have a razor in your hand? He said, because my, the consequences of my coming are sharp. Are sharp. The opportunities that God gives us come quickly every day. And once they are gone, we cannot recapture them. God gives us opportunities each day. We can sow to the flesh or we can sow to the Spirit. We can do good to those around us or we can live in our own selfish little kingdom, missing opportunities that may never come our way again. While we have opportunity, let us do good. Are you sowing God's Word, godly character? Are you sowing good works? Again, we're not saved by good works, but we're saved to do good works. Father, thank you for your word this morning. God, we thank you for the law of the harvest, the principle of the harvest, that we will reap exactly what we sow. Lord, may we not be deceived this morning. Lord, I pray that we would be honest with ourselves today to evaluate our life, that each of us would ask ourselves in our heart, am I sowing to the flesh or am I sowing to the Spirit? And Father, again, none of us obey perfectly, but God, by Your grace, we desire to be sowing seeds of godly character, sowing seeds of good works, making a difference in the lives of our church family and in the world. Lord, again, for Your glory. Father, show us exactly how we can uh, do what You've called us to do. And Lord, to do it with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. Lord, I thank You for our church. I thank You for the faithful support of this ministry by Your people. And Lord, I pray that we would not grow weary in doing good. Father, we would give and excel even more in our giving and going. Lord, that You might be glorified in this place. I pray that this place would be where, uh, where the pulpit is always faithful to preach Your Word and that we would set, never settle for anything less than the truth of Your Word. Thank You, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, if you don't know Christ, if you don't understand the truth of the gospel, that we're all separated from God because of our sin, that Christ died for our sin, and that to be a part of the church, to be a part of what God is doing in the world today, He has called out His people. And this morning, God is calling you to come to Jesus, to give your heart to Him. If you're a Christian and you're not walking, you've been sowing in the field of the flesh too long, come and get things right with Christ while we have opportunity. Let's stand together as Paula plays and you respond.